Electric vehicle news update for the automotive industry. Tons of electric cars, trucks, vans, and SUVs are expected this year. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, here today with the amazing Elizabeth. Today we thought we'd hit on several of the expected EV cars launching this year, giving you a sneak preview into what you can expect. Some cool stuff, some strange looking stuff, but one thing they all share in common, it's all pricey stuff. Well, that's the nature of the beast of EV cars. With the cost of batteries being what they are, we expect the EV market to grow at a slower pace than it might have seemed otherwise. Well, this is the school of super high intensity training for car buyers, so let's get rolling. Today, we're going to cover several EV cars, trucks, and vans expected to launch later this year. And don't worry, if we miss the one you're looking for, we plan to have a follow-up show soon, and we'll include some of the lesser-known makes and models. All right, it appears that EV manufacturers are trying to put a timeline on the fade-out of gas engines. The hope is that by 2025, the number of electric cars being sold will have a bigger impact on gas car manufacturing. Many EV cars are poised and ready for mass production, but consumers haven't quite bought into EV as being the new cars yet, probably because the prices aren't competitive. As Elizabeth said, this is largely a result of EV battery costs, $137 per kilowatt hour right now, but industry experts are hoping to have the cost down to $100 per kilowatt hour by 2028. For now, EV sales are expected to reach 2.5% of all vehicle sales in the U.S. this year. General Motors shared its ambitious goal of being fully zero emissions by 2035. Their North American chief, Steve Carlisle, said, We're setting ourselves up for this pivot, which is inevitable. Many car manufacturers believe that EVs are the future and GM is no exception, but they're also leaving themselves an out in the timeline. By setting this goal, they're trying to push others in the audio industry to join them. You can basically translate that to mean if enough competition doesn't follow, they'll just keep punting the football down the road. <laughs> All right, what are we expecting this year in EV cars, Kevin? Quite a few different models. Let's start with the Audi Q4 e-trons. Expected later this year, the Audi Q4 e-trons offer 295 horsepower electric motors with a range of up to 250 miles. Dual motor models will be out this fall. Hmm. Starting sticker price is expected to be around $45,000. That's quite a bit for a sedan. Audi has the A6 e-tron coming right behind the Q4 coming out later in the year. It's just a concept car for now, but the concept is a close rendition to what the actual production car will look like. It boasts a 800 volt charging capacity and will have two electric motors with 469 horsepower. And they say it could have as much as a 400 mile range on a single charge. Now that of course is for the lower horsepower motors. The A6 will still be available as a gas powered vehicle. The manufacturer known as Canoe is coming out with a van that resembles a pod-like skateboard microbus of sorts. <laughs> it's built on a universal platform so Canoe can easily swap body styles. And interestingly enough, Canoe is reportedly looking into doing a subscription service that would allow customers to use the vehicle when they want, kind of like Netflix. Wow. So Canoe claims this microbus will have a range of 250 miles and have 300 horsepower under the hood. More details coming soon on what that subscription cost might look like. Ford is coming out with their first electric F-150. I'm an F-150 fan. With engine space savings, it will have what they're calling a frunk. Excuse a me? A trunk that's up front. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, bad word. Um, it can be accessed from inside the vehicle and also by opening up the grill. The electric F-150 expected to make its debut sometime in 2021. And depending on the timing, it could be the first electric pickup we see here in the U.S., but Ford will have to beat Rivian, Bollinger, Lordstown Motors, and of course, Tesla Cybertruck to pull this off. These four manufacturers are all in the race for the first electric truck. We'll give you more details on those four in an upcoming show. The GMC Hummer EV is also part of the electric truck race and promises to compete in both the SUV and pickup markets. It promises 1,000 horsepower with a three-engine option and an insane 11,500 foot-pounds of torque. That's a lot. For you energy conscious, the Hummer will also have a two-engine and one-engine option. But they'll be gutless. <laughs> <laughs> Expect removable roof panels, four-wheel drive, and a four-wheel steering crab walk mode. Can kind of go sideways. Expect a little sticker shock because this vehicle starts at $112,595. Wow. Hyundai is launching a not a truck truck. Capitalizing on the name Santa Cruz, it will be out this summer with a truck-like appearance without being a truck. Kind of confusing, isn't it? Yeah. Well, think of it as a car-based pickup. They are hoping that people's interest in getting out more and needing a little extra space to haul stuff when they do so, well, that'll carry over into hot sales for the Santa Cruz, or at least they're hoping. But I wonder if the marketing genius is that Hyundai giving a consideration to the rate in which people have been fleeing California when they chose the name Santa Cruz because, you know, that little 
close association. I guess we'll find out soon if consumers decide to give this a not a truck truck their approval or not. Hyundai is also launching a new all-electric midsize crossover named Ionic. It will run on their new universal platform. Many of these car makers are coming out hmm. with these universal platforms so they can put various vehicles on them. Hyundai claims the Ionic 5 will have a fast charging capability that can take a battery from 5% to 80% charge in as little as 18 minutes. Man, you can't even beat that with a cell phone. No way. This is blazing fast. If true, we expect travel range to be somewhere north of 250 miles per charge. Nissan is expected to have the new Nissan Aria out this fall. The high-end power is 389 horsepower, and the longest range it has is 300 miles per charge. The Aria will feature the new semi-autonomous driving system, ProPilot 2.0, and a dual front-rear motor drive configuration. The Aria will hit first in Japan, but we'll see it later this year. Price is starting around 40000 We mentioned American startup Rivian earlier. I was going to leave this for a later show, but decided I want to talk about it today. They have a production-ready truck called the Rivian R1T, they are going after Bollinger and Tesla with this truck and, of course, others. Standard all-wheel drive, the ability to tow up to 11,000 pounds, adjustable air suspension, and level 3 autonomous driving capabilities. Does that sound familiar? A lot of them coming out with that. It has three battery pack options with a maximum range of 400 miles. The, the smaller the electric motor options, the greater the range. Can tow up to 11,000 pounds. Rivian claims that most powerful engine option can hit 60 miles an hour in a supercar like three seconds flat. That wow. is rip snorting That's fast. That's really fast. Sticker price starts at 69,000, mostly because 70,000 is just too <laughs> darn expensive. Well, Rivian isn't just making an electric truck, they're making an electric SUV too. Built on the same platform as the R1T, the R1S has the same battery pack options and ranges as the truck does. This SUV can tow 7,700 pounds and seat up to seven passengers. The R1S is set to compete against Tesla's Model X, and the starting sticker price is 72500 Volkswagen has a new electric vehicle that might surprise you. The ID6 crossover has a third row seat. The ID6X and the ID6 Cross were built by Chinese joint ventures and will be built and marketed in China first. Where transporting an extended family in one vehicle is important to many of the car owners there. Even with the extra heavy passenger load, the ID6 is predicted to have a range of 365 miles and up to 342 horsepower. Pretty impressive what they're getting out of these vehicles. Interestingly, there won't be any buttons or switches on this vehicle, only a 12-inch touchscreen display and a voice control system. Well, does it understand different languages and accents? I guess we're going to find out. I'm wondering how many long-legged Americans can fit in this crossover. I'm really impressed by the third row seat option in many of the SUVs. So perhaps starting overseas and seeing if there's any leg room problems uh, with this model is a good idea. I'm also scratching my head a little on this uh, touch screen idea because yes. I mean, with all these states having a, it being against the law to use a cell phone while driving, how is looking at a navigating screen and touch screen not using a device while driving? How do they figure that? Well, I don't get it. Well, finally, we can't leave out upcoming changes to dealer finance. Of course. With everything going digital, dealer F&I is getting a makeover. This past year, digital retail experiences were designed to model in-store buying experiences. However, the car industry is learning that customers don't want the hassle of the long, drawn-out finance session at the end of the digital car deal. Imagine that. <clears throat> yeah. Several of the product companies involved with dealer finance are researching a user-friendly, whoa, user-friendly digital car buying experience that is compliant and still offers customers the famous F&I products. So nice. Oh, yeah. They are like Jafar, clutching to the lamp, <clears throat> feeling devastated. Should it be out of their grasp? Well, that is just how dealers feel about the fees and products in dealer finance. Dealer insiders are probably saying, you won't pry our fees and products out of our cold, dead hands. All right. If you appreciate this EV car update, give us that great big thumbs up and smash that subscribe button if you have not already subscribed. And of course, remember to hit the notification bell so you stay up to date on all of our latest stuff. And if you love what we do and want to send a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see appearing on the screen now will be easy to find in that description box down below and on our website. But you know what's the best way you guys can help us out? Help get the word out by sharing with your family and friends and visit us on our other social media links appearing on the screen now. Wherever you like to hang out online, just join us and ask your friends to, too. Let's get the homework guide to 1 million subscribers. Thanks, everyone, for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.